And that button says, yes, we are. There we are. It looks like we are now live in all of our locations. Um, I'm going to restart. Would you believe that it is already the 1st of February? It's the 3rd of February. It's even Okay, more. it's the 3rd of February. <laughs> Always got that friend who's going to correct you. <laughs> I thought that's what friends are for. <laughs> Keep you Thank accountable. You. Correct you. Make you perfect. Oh, yes. But remember, I am imperfectly perfect. I love that phrase that you said. I told you that you were imperfectly imperfect. I gave you that phrase. Don't even. Yes, you did. I'm Welcome. perfectly imperfect. If you, <laughs> want to be my friend, if you want to be my friend, Terry Ann, you better be yes. perfectly imperfect. I am I am perfectly imperfect. That is for I sure. Like, I was oh, great. To that we can be friends. That's the stipulation. I want Good to morning, welcome our friends, friends here. Good Hi morning, friends. friends. Welcome. Thank We're you for joining us. Facebook friends. These are our Facebook friends. And some I even know outside of Facebook. We should probably introduce ourselves and then we can move on, Terry Ann. Oh, okay. Who are you? Oh, you want me to start? Go Hi, I am Sherry Berger. I am the owner of Here to There Consulting. We educate business owners with those tools to balance life, business, and finances. Because when we can get all that order in order, we can grow and we can move to the next level in our businesses. And my co-host that's with me today is Terry Ann. I am Terry Ann Porter, Life Coach TA. I help you to change your perspective. So that you can get rid of that negative self-talk, which will open up possibilities and make you see those pathways that are in front of you onto which you can proceed. And today's topic is friends. Through the month of February, we're going to talk about the people you need in our lives. And to, we've narrowed it down to four areas. What are those four areas again? We what were they, have, Sherry? We need to have friends. We need to have cheerleaders. We need to have coaches and we need to have mentors. Good Friends. morning. Somebody's saying hi. And if you don't accept, we can't see who you are. So just to let you know. So, yes, we need friends. We need cheerleaders. We need coaches and we need mentors. And we're going to talk about what the differences are. But today we're going to talk about friends. And I want to start off saying happy. I mean, good morning, Facebook friends. Oh, wait, when I say Facebook friends, some of these people that are actually on there are actual friends of mine, though, Terry Ann. But when I say Facebook friends, oh, my gosh, I had some Facebook friends, Terry Ann, and they defriended me. Oh, my gosh, I'm so depressed. Oh, wait. What kind, they what kind of a friend defriends you? Me. Oh. They defriended me. Oh, my gosh, I lost friends on Facebook. Isn't that mm. devastating? What That's devastating. Think? What do you think? I have to admit, if somebody defriends me, unless I get a notice telling me that, I don't know it. I know, but did you lose a real friend? Or is it oh. called make-believe friends? Ooh, make-believe friends. I feel bad. I mean, it's great that during this pandemic that we have social media, but I think people get confused between social media and friends and the younger generation has grown up with social media mm -hmm. I mean, you know people have literally became depressed and upset because people defriend them on facebook right i could demarry mm -hmm. my husband on facebook and stay married to him in real life and i've actually threatened to do that before terry ann <laughs> <laughs> because if you've got too much politics, too much religion, and I run my own business, I don't need that in my life. Not that I don't want to, not that I'm married to love my life, but right? So people could defriend you for other reasons than that you're not friends in real life. Oh, okay. So today wow. we want to talk about having those really, I mean, you have lots of friends, right? My husband has had to teach Mr. Mrs. Extrovert. I collect people. That's what my <laughs> husband says. And I love people and people are great, but not everybody is one of your good friends, right? So you have right. acquaintances, associates, 
What is the other one? I thought I told you the three. I forgot what they were. But the point is what level of friendship too, right? Not just who's your friend. There are different levels. Yes. But we were talking are, earlier. Go ahead. We were talking earlier about the different levels. And part of the different levels in our, in when we were talking earlier is there are some friends that different, you'll do different things with different friends. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the levels. It, it's not that this friend is better or anything. It's just that when I go do this activity, this friend is fun. This friend doesn't enjoy that. So when I go do this activity, then I do it with this friend. Does yeah. that make either friend worse or better than the other? So the main reason why we're really talking about friends is in real life, there's some people we really need to defriend. I hate to say that. Ooh. And maybe you can still, like you said, if you're in a group with them, you can still hang out with them, but you need to hang out with them less, right? Because unfortunately, there's actual tox toxic people in your life. Okay, Pam, what are you noping about? I don't know what nope means. Tian's out here saying no. Then we got good morning. Good morning. Great to see a bunch of people on here. And you talked about mentors. Oh, you put all the different kinds that we need in our life. Yes. I pointed out the four different areas that you were talking about. How do you make a friend? Especially on Facebook. How do you make a Facebook friend? Is it make just a, a name that pops up? Friend? I don't how know do you how make to I don't know how to make a Facebook friend. So you mean you have people that you just go friend on Facebook that you don't really know? I have had some people ask to be my friend because they're somebody else's friend. Does that make them my friend? I would. Hmm. Oh, and Kathy Weaver says it's a beautiful day oh. in the neighborhood. Oh, wait, Mr. <laughs> Roger wanted to be everybody's friend. And that's okay to be everybody's friend and be kind. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, right, just different levels of friendship. Sure. And we do need to be careful on social media who we be friends with, even if they're friends with a friend of ours. Because back in social media world, that could even be somebody that's out there trying to be friends with all your friends and then come be friends with you. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you have to be careful of that. But I think knowing who your real, Kathy Weaver likes to call it your tribe, right? Your real people that are yes, there, that support tribe. you, that believe in you, that care about you, that are there for you. I'm talking those really close circle friends of yours, right? Mm -hmm. Those are really important to have in your life. But what's really important to have out of your life is those toxic people that don't believe in you, that might talk bad about you, that might make you feel bad about yourself because you're perfectly imperfect and they want you to be perfect, right? That's where I came up with, I'm perfectly imperfect, right? Mm -hmm. um, Grace made a comment about uh, getting to know Facebook friends. Build a relationship with a Facebook friend to see if you have anything in common. A friendship might develop. So, for, so Facebook could be used as an introduction then. Now, do we have anything in common? Yeah, you might want to see that. But what if we had a cup of coffee and we see if we actually, you know, could oh. be friends and mm -hmm. maybe build a relationship? Because what Kathy Weaver just said, Vicki Cannon would say that if you're friends someone on social media, it's like you open your front door to them. Oh, I like that. So do you just say, hey, come on in. I sort of know you. We have a little bit in common. So we got to be careful. I think when we're trying to be friends with people on social media, I think we become friends too quick on social media, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's different if they're followers in your business and they're followers in other aspects. But yeah, you do need to be careful of that. And so maybe build a relationship, get to know them over time have coffee with them, even if it's on Zoom, you know, reach out to people and get to know people. I mean, LinkedIn is a really, really good place to find people like Grace was talking about that are in common. So that's more networking. So you can use Facebook for networking. You can use LinkedIn for networking, but you got to realize it's networking. 
Yes, Grace, sometimes you have to use Zoom to meet with those people. Zoom has really made it a great way to connect with people, even if you're not in the same locale or that if you're in quarantine. Locale, yeah. Well, and if we're in different states, like I've met people through this pandemic, right? I've met them all over the world, but that's networking. Those are not real friends. There's interesting. Tell me the difference between friendship and networking then. No, networking, I've met some amazing friends and I've became friends with people, but some people are business partners or networking people, but maybe they're not your so-called, you know, good friend. Okay. I'll see, see what, um, look what she said. Kellen says, it wasn't until I met my husband that I realized how dangerous it could be to accept a random friend request. Kept me grounded and thinking logically. Oh, sometimes we do need people to remind us. Good friend in your life becomes a husband. Sometimes those random requests can be a problem. Well, and I think with texting, <laughs> social media, inboxing, we don't always use our logic like she was talking about because it's mm -hmm. so easy just to text you and say something stupid. Right. But if you're going to write an email and you have to reread it before you send it, if you're going to make a phone call and if you actually know a person you're meeting in person, would you ever say that to them? Right. Or would you even ask them like Kathy brought up to come into your house? Mm -hmm. Yep. I get that. Kenna. I'm way too trusting of people to think that people could have negative motivation. And I am like that. Like my husband says, I collect people. I think all people think like me. Everybody's kind, nice. Guess what? Not everybody is. Business partners can become friends. Yep. And that's exactly yes, what can. I do. Sometimes that's exactly. the introduction. Exactly. I have a lot of my business partners that later become friends. And people can, and you can build those relationships over time and have really good friends in it. But being aware and not trusting or, mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, just what is it called? Let it happen organically over time, right? Mm -mm. I find, I guess a great example I have, I met my husband online before all of the dating things, before all the social media stuff. This was what, 22 years ago we were in a chat room at that point you didn't get to see each other's face everything was typed and we were just part of a chat room in a group of people and i had met several people that were local and i liked meeting them because it put a face to a name so i kind of had a face to who am i talking to now i was in kansas city he was in the st louis area i happened to be in that area with a friend i met him so that we could all i want to do is put a face to it to him so now I had a face but as we got to know each other beyond the face then there was a different relationship than chatting with each other in that chat room or even going into a private room to chat or even then a different level talking on the phone that was a different level then meeting face to face could we the friendship we developed in one place introduced us but we had to become familiar with each other area you know can we sit at a table together? And I was really scary at that point to let people know I even met him online. Because people say, oh, I met, I knew people who, who met someone so online, got married right away, and then was complaining. You didn't get to know them. So you need to get to know people beyond the, I'm sitting on Facebook and chatting with you back and forth. What is it like to sit down to have a cup of coffee with them? Does their chewing drive you crazy? The little things you need more than just the online conversation in a Facebook thread. I think that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> no, and you're perfectly saying that. And that's back to what Kathy was saying that our mm -hmm. friend Vicki Cannon would say is that you're inviting them into your house. So when you met your husband, were you going to take him off that chat room and invite him right over to your house to come have a mm -hmm. cup of coffee? And maybe you guys could even hang out in your bedroom. What do you think? I mean, no, how fast, not right? for a while. No. <laughs> my, my point. So we got to make sure that when we are like, um, can I even brought up when we're going through the process of getting to know people, mm -hmm. what level, right? Are we at right? 
And I've really enjoyed, I mean, I haven't, haven't enjoyed the pandemic. I don't like the pandemic, but you've gotten to know people on Zoom. You've gotten to get to know people being in networks. You became friends with people, but you're still getting to know them over time, right? So you just slowly build those relationships. And there's another interesting thing about friends. It's okay if you outgrow a friend or you lose a friend which is sad to say, and it's hard, but you, God puts people in your life for a season, mm -hmm. right? And some are in it for a long season and some of them for either they get sick and they die, which is bad. And I've had it happen or, you know, or some reason you guys outgrew each other or, but realizing that that friend was there in that season and being able to realize that you need to move on right to the next one. Now, in, that's, in saying that, I have friends over 30 some odd years that I've been friends with forever that are more family than friends, right? Because they've been friends with me so long. But mm -mm. So then it's not a failure if, if you've outgrown a friendship. No, but it is a loss, right? It's a loss. A lot of people on yes. here which people would be shocked. I've been divorced too. I was married very, very young and got divorced very, very young. But yes. yeah, serving God's purpose, a season. I like how Kathy said that. But God puts people in, in your life for reasons, for seasons, for a purpose. And mm -hmm. God will always be there, right? And I know some people, like you've lost a spouse, Terry Ann. You've lost a spouse to divorce and you've also lost one to death. Yes. And that could be hard. I can't imagine. I've only lost one being divorced and was single parent for a minute, first season of my life, more than a minute, but you get what I'm saying. For five years while I put myself through college. Sure. And then now I'm married, love my life. I can't imagine, you know, but you have to know that God is there in all of it, right? And I no lost my brother. Happens. My brother, I lost him in the Pentagon 9-11. And you might say, oh, well, that's a sibling. Yeah, but he was one of my friends. And I was very, very close to him, right? And I had him in my life for 37. No, I was 30. He was 37. I was 32. So for 32 years of my life, right? But God's in it, like Kathy says. And God's going to put more people in your path as you move along in your journey doing God's purpose. And as, you're, friends, going, as you're going through those, then you do have... God, the people that God brings in helps you through that loss as well, where God is always there. It's, okay, but you need that physical person. This person is stepping out and is bringing someone in so that you can still feel that presence. At a loss, you find all kinds mm -hmm. of friends coming out of the woodwork. But again, the level of friends. I have a friend who recently lost her husband. Uh, and she had those friends who were always close to her right there beside her. But then she said, they're friends I haven't heard in, from in 30 years. Thanks to social media are, are connecting back. But now they want, you know, so di different things happen, different losses happen. And people, people use those things to come in and out of your life. So I have two college friends very godly Christian people. One of them is actually a pastor, but anyway, um, but we don't talk to each other very often, but as min the minute I pick up my phone if all heck breaks loose in my life, those two people will be there for me in a minute like that. And I know it. And so even mm -hmm. though we don't talk a lot, we know that we are like that good of friends, right? Us three of us will just pull together anytime we need to. And I can just call one of them, right? And I know that, and they know that about me, but life gets busy. We have our own families. We got, I run my own business. My friend, my other friend lives in Leavenworth. You know, I mean, it just gets busy, mm -hmm. right? So to realize that you have those friends too. I guess they're my I, back pocket friends. I'm going to tell them that I'm just joking, but no, <laughs> if I called them today, they'd be like, oh my gosh, Sherry, it's so great to hear from you. It wouldn't even be, you know, why are you calling me, you know? I kind of like you posted something earlier that I shared out. I loved it. Anyone can make you smile. Many people can make you cry.
but it takes someone really special to make you smile with tears in your eyes. Yeah. I Everyone imagine. needs that one special friend that will make you smile with tears in your eyes. So I have an amazing friend that I met through Bible study, and I'm not that hot, that uh, close to this person, but every day they send me an awesome saying and text. So I got put on her, text out everybody. And sometimes I get some amazing things that really speak to me. People always ask me where I get my posts, Terry Ann. Do you know where my posts come from? No, where do they come from? God. So if you're doing your devotion, you're reading your oh. Bible, you have friends that text you these awesome things, you just don't know, right? And that spoke to me so clearly because I was going through, I had a bad weekend, just to let you know. So I had a bad weekend, might have included some crying and not very, right? Guess what? I'm not perfect. I have bad moments. So I was overloaded on Friday and I had a bad weekend. And then all of a sudden Monday, I got that post and I felt like God was speaking to me. Right. And I thought that's such a great thing to put out on social media to encourage and support others. And Terry and I went back to us and I was like, wait, we're going to talk about friendships. Right. And then you talked about how friends will come around you when bad things happen. Almost two years ago, I don't want to make this about me because life is not about me. But I almost died three days before my son's wedding in Baltimore, Maryland in 2018. My whole colon was shutting down. They told me I won the lottery. And I've never seen anybody go through the ER, full ER, five o'clock and be in surgery by nine. But praise God, I'm here. And the surgeons couldn't even figure out why I was here. Why I didn't have to be on a bag, didn't. All these things that could have bad happened to me, which they told my husband and I were going to happen. And they didn't. But Terry Ann, why? Why did it not happen? Because God, God was looking out for me. God. God's not done with me. Well, I'm a giver. And there's some people that are, you know, but I'm a heart person. I'm a giver. So all those friends that I for years did, 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 did for them. There was a moment in my life, three and a half months, I think at least, I couldn't do for others. And you know how hard that was on me because I had to take care of me. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Those people that are takers will get mad at you in those moments. Yes. And I lost a couple of friends, but were they friends? My husband was like, really? Cause where's the give and take in that relationship. But then when I say that, guess what? God put other people in my journey, in my life that are empowering, that are amazing and understand about give and take, right? Mm -hmm. so where are some times when you guys have found out when you have real friends versus Facebook friends, what do you want to call them? You know, superficial. And you right. know what? I'm okay with, I'm actually okay with having relationships where I do more for somebody than they do for me. And they're not a real friend. I'm okay with that. Because what if I'm planting the seed for God? What if I'm giving to that person and they need something? I'm mm -hmm. okay with that. But to realize that and to know that that's the way that relationship is, right? Mm -hmm. So that you you can be a little more aware, right? Right. You know, because helping the least of these that maybe can't do back for you, nothing's wrong with that. So I'm sorry, but I'm over here getting on my soapbox. But that was <laughs> a real big lesson for me these last two years. Discernment is a skill that needs attention daily to develop it, to be useful. You have, yes. It's not just something that you just kind of put on the shelf. You do need to develop that. It's, it's a skill like anything else. When you meet a friend for coffee, what are some of the things that you talk about? That depends on who you're meeting for, right? Okay. Is it a business meeting? What kind of meeting is this coffee meeting? Or are we just hanging out? Is it a get to know you meeting? Do you have get to know you coffees? Yes. Don't you? Mm -hmm. I like coffee, in case you didn't know. <laughs> Nobody knows that about me. And Terry Ann thinks I have a lot of fun coffee cups. Today I have the one that says, have faith, treasure family, and enjoy your friends. Very appropriate for today. 
but we should be enjoying our friends. So if you have those friends that are draining you and you don't enjoy, why are you hanging out there? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, that friend that when you see their name come across on your phone, you go, oh, am I busy right now? So I was talking to one of my friends, actually mentor, Toastmaster mentor of mine. And he's like, you know, Shiri, you have to do your business. You know, maybe you interact with different people in Toastmasters, all these other, but what you choose to do in your spare time, who you choose to hang out with in your spare time is up to you. So what do you think of that, Terri Ann? I like that. Who you choose to spend time with in your spare time. I like that word choice. We have a lot of choices and sometimes we don't realize that. Yes. On Facebook, we have the choice. Spill my coffee while I'm at it. We have the choice of, do I accept that friend request? We have the choice do of we, do I interact with this person? Or do we inbox them, get to know them better and figure out oh. why they're wanting to be our friend, right? Why do you want to be my friend? I don't know you. I don't know you. How do I know you? What do you, what do you want from me? Yes. Well, and if we have common friends, like maybe Toastmaster friends or Bible study friends, or that's a great common interest, like mm -hmm. Grace was bringing up, that I can inbox and ask you about. I don't know, Terry, and I know we're running out of time, but I do know that we have a Facebook user and I don't know that we told people that StreamYard doesn't like to play well with Facebook. Are they friends? Is StreamYard and Facebook friends? Oh, no. Well, they, they've got their own boundaries. They've each put up their own little fence and said, you can't play with my friends unless. <laughs> I like that correlation. You can't play with my friends unless they I, they give you permission. So um, there are, by the way, um, and you don't have to do this, but to some of our people, we only see the word Facebook user on our stream. If you go to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook, it will just ask permission. Do you really want Facebook to know your name? Some people don't really want their name known. That's okay too. I can talk to you without knowing your name. Now, when we're talking about uh, like people coming in onto Facebook, I have told people oftentimes, which area of my life do you want to get to know me? Do you want to get to know me as a friend? Okay, then this is my friend account. Do you want to get to know me as a coach and a businesswoman? Instead, go to my page here because I will stay more, more business focused over there. Or do you want to see what I'm doing as an author? I've got another page over there. You decide which information you want. Do you want to know about my knit and crochet projects? That's on another page. So which part of my life, if you don't want to know about this part of my life, but you're interested in that part, go to the other page. So I do ask people to decide which, which part of me do you want to be a friend with? What if I want to be friends with all parts of you? Then what? <laughs> oh, man, you're asking for an awful lot there. Well, I don't know. Since I hang I out with everything. I hang out YouTube, with you in business world, Facebook. faster world, and I'm friends with you. So I don't know. <laughs> Um, so yeah, what are we going to talk about next week, Terri Ann? Next week. Well, today we're talking about friends, kind of the differences in friends. We need them in our life, but next week we also need cheerleaders and friends are not necessarily cheerleaders. There is a difference in this area. So next week we're going to talk about the cheerleaders we need in our life. After that, we're going to talk about the coaches we need in our life and then the mentors we need in our life. And yes, there is a difference between a coach and a mentor. And I love what Grace says. That makes perfect Ooh. sense to qualify Facebook friends. I love that. Courtney, I'm so glad you're here today. I'm glad that you're on. Please come back next week. I want everybody to come back next week. I really enjoyed that you guys are supporting us and being here every week. And we really, really appreciate you. We have one more ask for you. Terry Ann and I want to become better communicators. We want to add more value to conversations and with Sherry and Terry Ann. So we have a survey that we would love for you to go out because what episode are we at right now? Is this 21? This is episode 21. Can you believe it? Yeah. We've had like five or six people send us surveys, which thank you if you've sent us a survey. If you have not and you've been on some of our episodes, we would love your feedback because um, yeah, to be better, 
we like to have constructive feedback. So if you could do that for us, we would really, really appreciate it. And I really want to see everybody tomorrow, um, next week. That will be the 10th, February 10th. We're going to talk about those cheerleaders in your life. So we will see you then. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks for joining us.